I'm new to where I live and I made new friends. I got along really well with this one particular girl. And over the next couple of weeks, we become best friends. So imagine my surprise when I find out that this girl was only friends with me to stab me in the back. I'm a 26-year-old female. I've been working as a freelance writer since I left university and I enjoy my work. By the way, all names are changed here to protect my identity. It does get stressful at times, enjoying work. I've wanted to be a writer ever since I was a small child, and I needed something to pay the bills. Wallace, I worked on my own manuscript. I've been working on my own novel for a while now, and I'm happy with how it's going. It's a work of love. It's almost at the stage to go to publishers, and it is exciting. Or at least it should have been. However... I've been betrayed by someone who I trusted and I loved like a sister, and I'm just not sure what to do. I met Lisa, female 30, while I was working on a project for my current publisher, Mr. Jacobs. He works with people who are well known to the general public and have dreams of being a writer to add to their already abundant wealth, I suppose. A lot of these people write children's stories. Well, I say they do, but in reality, I write the stories. Mr. Jacob just publishes them, and the well-known personality, it gets their name put on it. Lisa is a proofreader, and she would do her things once my story was done and sent to Mr. Jacobs. Well, there's a lot of work involved so that some famous people can just sit in a bookshop, sign copies of their children's stories for their fans. A couple times, I went to have them sign a book just for the fun of it knowing full well that they would have no idea what they have just signed a book for the person who really wrote the story. I guess you could say that makes me a little petty. <laughs> Anyways, Lisa and I emailed a few times through work and got chatting about books in general. It turned out we loved the same type of novels and Lisa mentioned that she was part of a local book group. We met up about once a week just to discuss a novel that they were reading. She invited me to join. Well, I went along. We've been friends ever since, you could say. We began to meet for coffee or lunch and just regularly plan stuff throughout the week, and we talk about our lives and other plans. I told her about my novel, which at the time was in its very early stages, and she offered to proofread it for me. I was happy to take her up on that and offered to pay her. Lisa said that she would not accept payments as friends help each other out, and if I wanted to thank her, I could name a character after her or something, she said it while laughing, so I was not sure if she was being serious or not. Time passed and our friendship did grow, and life was pretty good. I met my partner, Matt, who worked for a media firm, and we started dating eight months ago. I've never met someone like him who I felt so at ease with so quickly. He's everything I would have wanted in a man, and he's gorgeous as well, so a lot of people consider me lucky. I met him through Mr. Jacobs, who seems to play a huge part in my social and love life, it seems. Matt does all the work to get the books known and out there, and also loves literature, like I do. I invited him to join the book group, and he fit right in with us. Work in the freelance world has slowed down a little, and due to the cost of the living crisis that was happening all around the world, and I was able to focus on my own manuscript for a while. I worked solidly on that for weeks with a little interruption and it got to the stage where I was happy for it to go to the first read for Mr. Jacobs. That might be before I was going to send it. I went for a meal with Matt and Lisa and told them how excited I was that I thought the manuscript was ready for its first edit. Matt had known I've been working flat on it and so it was less of a surprise to him than it was to Lisa. On the outside, she looked really happy and excited. She said maybe before we sent it, she should have a run-through for the proofreading, as it will potentially save time later on with editing. Also, if she looked at it before I sent it to Mr. Jacobs, I would not be charged, as she was doing it for a friend, but once it went through him, I would have to go on his bill. Naively, I thought it was a great idea. The night when we got home, I emailed the manuscript over to Lisa, and she replied telling me to give her a week. She would have the whole thing fully proofread and edited. I was really happy and sent her a brief email to Mr. Jacobs, saying that I should have the first draft of the manuscript ready to send him in about a week. 
That being done, I started to work on some freelance projects that he had sent me, and waited for Lisa to send me the proofread manuscript back over to me. Well, it never came. Lisa betrayed me in a way I could never have expected, and I'm still trying to understand what possessed her to do what she did. In the week that Lisa was supposed to be proofreading my manuscript, she actually sent it to a publishing house called Paxton, as her own work. Paxton's notorious in the writing world for not caring about what they publish, and in the past, they've had issues with plagiarism and stories that are too similar to already published works. Last year, they went viral for publishing a story that was called The Prince of the Rings, and I think you can guess what it was about. I've still not received a manuscript back from Lisa over a week later, and I've been messaging and calling only to get told that she's sorry. She's been busy and would be ready for it soon. I did not push much as she was doing the work as a favor, and a few more days or a week didn't really make much of a difference, did it? I only knew that something had gone wrong when Matt called me from work, said he needed to talk to me urgently. I was worried as I thought he wanted to end our relationship due to how serious his voice was. He asked me to come to his office, which was strange, but I dutifully went over and what he showed me knocked me sick. Matt's firm got a list of books from all publishers that are about to be published, and he had recognized one of the titles and names of the list sent from Paxton. On the list was my novel, but next to it was Lisa's name. The book had already been put in production and was listed for release soon. I sunk in the chair next to Matt's desk, not trusting my eyes. I know it's been a mistake. There was no way my best friend would have done this to me. I tried to find a logical explanation for it, but there was nothing. I had to face the facts. The person I thought was my best friend had stolen my manuscript and published it through a dodgy publication house before I've even been able to get it registered under my name with Mr. Jacobs. I desperately called and messaged Liska, asking what has she done, but there's no reply. I don't know what to do. I've lost everything I've worked so hard for over the last few years and been betrayed by someone I literally loved as a sister. I need to think and get some advice, but if anyone has any ideas, please send me a message. I'm desperate, and honestly, I'm heartbroken. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So this story has a couple more updates. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Let's go ahead and see what the heck's going up with OP's best friend. Update number one. I wrote the first part of this when I was in a bad place, as I've just found out what happened and I wish I could say that things have improved, but they have not. Lisa did not show up for the book group or reply to any of my messages and all the intents and purposes disappeared from my life. I talked to Mr. Jacobs and explained what happened. He was shocked as Lisa had worked for him as long as I had, and he would never have thought she was capable of stealing from me. Well, Matt was absolutely furious, and he wanted to out her as a phony right away. But Mr. Jacobs advised against that and suggested we try to take down it legally, or negotiation route. I contacted a lawyer to talk about what happened, and Wallace, they were understanding. They said that this would be a hard case to prove, as I've not registered the work to my name. I pointed out that I've emailed Mr. Jacobs to say the manuscript was just about ready for the first check. But my lawyers pointed out that in the correspondence, there's no official mention that I would be publishing it in my name. I was a registered freelance writer who specialized in ghostwriting for other people. It would not be unusual for me to send a piece of work that I had written for another person. Mr. Jacobs, my lawyer, suggested that we write an official letter to Lisa, and this would let her know that I was considering legal action. That in itself might be enough to make her back down, stop the book from hitting the shops. So we sent the letter, which basically said that as the real author of the manuscript, I was asking that she did the right thing, withdraw the book from publication under her name, and return ownership for my publication under my name. Now, I really hope that Lisa would see that she's acted so despicably and come to her senses. I mean, we've been friends for so long... I was shocked that she'd even think to do this. I kept trying to tell myself that there's a logical reason, and she would see that she's wrong. Against the advice of my lawyer, Matt and Mr. Jacobs, 
I also sent Lisa a really long email, appealing to her to see sense. I begged her to talk to me and tell me why she's done this and that I was sure we could find a solution. I told her I valued her friendship and I would not hold this against her if she just made this right. I was sure actually in time we could be able to be close again like we were. Matt said I was too nice and he could not understand why I would still want to be friends with the woman who betrayed me. I've always been a forgiving person and I think at times people just take advantage of that. Both letters were sent out yesterday and now all I can do is wait and see what happens. This is all in Lisa's hands for now. If she does not reply or if she refuses to see sense, I'll have to take this further. But I'm praying that it'll not come to that. I'll update again once I hear and thank you to anyone who's offered me advice in the comments. At the moment, I'm remaining anonymous, but maybe once this is all over, I'll let people know who I am. Update number two. It's been nearly three weeks since I've updated this and I've been waiting for replies before I decide what to do next. I've received replies to both my letters from the lawyer and from my emails to Lisa. The reply to the legal letter came from Paxson's lawyers as Lisa had passed it on to them to deal with. It made sense, I suppose, as they've invested in Lisa and needed to protect their investment. Also, with all the other cases of lawyers and publishers brought against them, they most likely had lawyers on staff to deal with the continuous litigation against them. The official letter said that the work was already being published and was ready for release in the next month. They would be going ahead with publication, and if I continued to dispute the legal rights of their author to publish her work, they'd be happy to see me in court to deal with it. They, in a subtle threat said that they would be happy to tie the case up in paperwork and litigation for years if needed, as it was really worth my time and money to fight them. I assume they were used to people rolling over and giving up, as most new authors hardly had the money behind them to fight a large firm, in an ongoing litigation case at least. So that was a dead-end term of getting my work back. The letter from Lisa was in many ways worse than the one from Paxson's lawyer. It was personal and hurt me so much worse. It's getting to the point where this is going to become a battle between us, and so I'm no longer overly bothered about this coming out in the open. I'm no longer ready to forgive Lisa and put this behind us. If she would just admit what she's done, maybe we could. But she decided to make things worse, and so now I'm angry. In her email, you couldn't even know we've been friends ever. Almost sisters, and I didn't recognize the person who wrote the thing she did. I did wonder if she had someone else helping her, but Matt said it was time to just accept that Lisa was the enemy, and probably always has been. I've never seen Matt angry before, but he was angry on my behalf, and told me I should be mad as heck as well. In the email, Lisa really said things that you could only say to someone that you hated, and well, to give her credit... She never at any point admitted that she's done it. If anything, she made it seem like I was a delusional ghostwriter who had changed my mind about writing for her and was trying to take her story for myself. Lisa always said that she's had not the skills to write a novel, but that email was a work of art when it came to fiction. I said to Matt that maybe she had another ghostwriter write the email for her as a project because it was a thing of beauty and would not be out of place in a novel. Here are the highlights from this amazing work of fiction for your enjoyment. Lisa wrote that while she appreciated that her novel was a wonderful piece of work with the potential to be a best-selling series, it was unprofessional for a ghostwriter to try to reclaim credit for a story. It was well known that I was a freelance writer and specialized in ghostwriting. She listed a whole list of books that I've written for people, and she said she was hurt that I was going against her dream to be an author just because I've changed my mind about working for her. She used my habit of turning up at a book signings to have the book I wrote as a ghostwriter signed by, quote, the author, as a sign that I was overly possessive of my work and could not let go the fact that the stories didn't even belong to me. Well... She then stuck a figurative knife in my back and twisted it deep. 
She claimed that we've never been friends and I was a weird person who she's taken under her wing because she felt sorry for me. She said it's a shame that I have no friends and so she had done me a favor by introducing me to her friends in the book group and they've tolerated me as my lesser knowledge of the literacy world. She ended the email by saying that if I continue to contact her outside of Paxson's or her lawyer, she could contact the police and report me for stalking, even harassment. She suggested that I find a new hobby rather than trying to take away her dream and happiness and focus on what I do best, writing children's books for people. I must reread that email like 10 times over the day, and every time I read it, it makes my blood boil. I've worked so hard over the years, grinding out children's books and crappy romance books for an airhead celebrity to allow me to focus on my novel, and now Lisa was trying to take my baby away from me, my life's work. I've always been a calm and placid person, but as I read that email, an anger I didn't know I possessed began to raise. It was not a red-hot anger, one in which you would react on impulse. No, no, no. It was cold. It was an icy anger that planned and took down the focus of that anger methodically. Matt saw it in me and I saw him smiling as I reread the email. When I asked him, why was he smiling, he replied with this. I'm smiling because I can see it on your face that you are ready to fight back. I have your back, babe. Let's take this witch down. I laughed and sent an email to Mr. Jacobs telling him that what had happened and attached a copy of the letter I've received from Paxson's lawyers and Lisa. I was not expecting his help. I just wanted him to know what was happening as there was going to be a fallout from this. I crap you not. Less than an hour later, my phone rang and Mr. Jacobs informed me that he was ready for war. This was not the first time that Paxson's had messed with one of his authors and he's fed up and he's giving them a bad name to publishing houses. We agreed to go to his office the following day and work out what's the best course of action. So that's where we are at the moment. I'll update you when we have a plan in place. However, it will most likely be once things are in motion, as it would be no use if I give away what I've planned and somehow they find out. Update number three. Three months have passed. Yesterday, Lisa's book, <laughs> yeah, my book, but you know what I mean, was published. The thing with Paxton is they don't hang around and from submissions to publication is very short. I assume it's to stop people being able to do anything about their work being stolen or the blatant plagiarism of the authors. I've kept my head down and followed Lisa's request to not contact her. I've not attended the book group, which this whole thing started at, and I'm pretty sure she thinks she's won. So, the meeting with Mr. Jacobs raised a few interesting points. One that really made me laugh, and I assume never occurred to Lisa when she went behind my back to publish my work, is that novel was written to be a series. It's not a standalone story, and the storylines are in no way concluded by the end of the first book, if anything, it leaves readers with more questions that would be addressed in the next novel. I had the second one planned out and parts written already. Lisa has never seen those or even known the long-term story plan. She'll have no choice but to have to provide the next part of the story if she wants it to be successful and to establish her as an author. What kind of author writes the first one of a series and leaves it like that? I assume Paxson's will just find a ghostwriter, but it's going to be hard for someone else to write the following up with no access to character sheets, endings for storylines, etc. I sure as heck won't be doing it for her. So, we need to plan to expose Lisa and Paxson's as a fraud. Mr. Jacobs said that our hidden weapon was Matt and the media company that he worked for. Authors reply on media firms to get their work out there and to write reviews for them. Matt works for one of the most respected media companies when it comes to literature, and we could use that for our advantage. Matt even said that he would take his bosses and explain the situation to them. No one in their literacy world would ever fail to believe that Paxson's had done something like this, and it was an exposed that they could work with us. They actually had the real author to work with. Mr. Jacob was working his way through a manuscript editing it himself. 
He had found a couple of places that we could do improvement in and suggested I rewrite them for publication. He fully intended to publish it in my name and get my right as the author sorted. We had to be careful as nothing could leak about this and so we had time to put things in place without Lisa or Paxson getting into our plans. Matt was going to look at what they've planned for the release and we would time our revenge to correspond. With their release date, of course, because, well, public signings, promotional events, all of it. I mentioned that Lisa probably expected me to try and turn up at any of the signings, as I've done so in the past for books I've ghostwritten. She would have things in place to stop me. I also mentioned it was possible that they would bring the fight to us and say I was obsessed. An obsessed writer trying to claim it's all mine. Mr. Jacob says he does not think that that's going to happen, or even they could. And then they have to admit that they used a ghostwriter and it would not be a huge leap for the public to realize it could have been a stolen book. He asked me how happy I was to be paraded out in public to fight this as it could lead to some negative reports about me when Paxson's realized what we're up to. So I said I'm prepared to go to any lengths itself if I have to. I wanted my book back and would do whatever it took. Matt laughed and said he hoped I would not have to go that far. At the end of the meeting, I was happy we had a plan in place, and we all we had to do now was wait. And when the time was right, launch our fight against Lisa and Paxson's stolen book. Little did I know at the time how big this would become. As I've said before, Paxson's and many others like them make a lot of money ripping off legitimate writers, and there are a lot of unhappy and angry writers out there who were waiting for someone to take a stand... No matter what the end result, I was about to become a spokesperson for the rights of authors to be able to stand up to publishers and claim back their work. All that was in the future, and at the end of the meeting, we were poised and ready to begin the fight. All of that's left now is to detail the grand finale. Maybe I'll write a book about it, who knows? The true story of an author betrayed and manuscript stolen. I'll pause and update the ending and one more final update. All conclusions deserve their own section and this will be no different. Update 4. Final update. I can't help myself. I'm a writer to the end and even when documenting one of the worst parts of my life, I can't help but write it as I'm writing a novel. The difference is that this is all true. Paxson's realized that they had a book on their hands that had potential to be a bestseller, which was unusual for them. They were more known for cheesy romance books and books that ended up on sale racks and supermarkets. This also explains what they were going to fight tooth and nail to protect their author. I'm not blowing my own trumpet here saying that it had potential to be a bestseller. Mr. Jacobs was the one he told me and he knows his books. I should probably explain why I call him Mr. Jacobs and not his given name. Firstly, no one knows what his given name is and secondly, if you saw him... You could agree he was a man who you could never call anything but mister. He's the epitome of a publisher, right down to his love of velvet waistcoats, fully groomed facial hair, and the monocle he used to read the manuscripts. He's a wonderful human being and an author's biggest supporter. Or, as it turns out, also their worst nightmare if you hurt one of his own. The official launch came around and, as expected... It was done with all the bells and whistles of a book that people should take notice of. On the day of the release, an article appeared via Matt's company and was picked up by a lot of other media sites, even papers. The clever part was that at the point, we did not name names. It said that a source had told them that the current project from Paxson's publishers was actually a story that's been stolen from another author. It's not naming the book at the point, and we waited to see what would happen. As expected, by the end of the day, they went into full denial, and they actually released the name of the book and author by themselves. So basically exposed Lisa without us having to. They went down the route that a jealous friend of the author was trying to claim they wrote the book, and they threatened legal proceedings against the slander. Mr. Jacobs checked with me again that I was prepared to face the scrutiny and underhand tactics of Paxson's, and when I confirmed that I was, we launched a full-on attack. I gave an interview for Matt's media company alongside Mr. Jacobs. This was published in a number of papers, magazines, websites. 
I held my hands a copy of the edited manuscript, and I said that I would be prepared to give a rundown of the next book. But it would have to be kept to between me and the reporter. But it would show I have the second book already planned. So we appeared outside the book signings, giving interviews and being photographed. And I made an offer to Lisa and Paxons to join me on television. Just to debate the story, the characters, see who knows them the best. Lisa had read the book, of course, but she didn't have more detailed character notes and sketches, which I would offer as proof to claim my ownership. Mr. Jacobs also announced that he had seen the manuscript before Lisa sent it to Paxons. He'd only seen my highlight, but it was enough to prove I was writing it, and he would release the correspondence between us. All in all, it was a full-out attack. As he protested and made us stand... More and more writers came out to say their work had been stolen by packs and publishers also. And we just kept gaining the momentum like a snowball down a hilly hill. No matter what happened now, I've caused enough trouble to leave a stain on Lisa's release of my book. This did go on for two weeks, and we had letters from their lawyers threatening us if we did not stop. I wasn't on my own, though. I had the power of Mr. Jacobs' lawyers behind me. And they wrote back saying that they would be filing papers against the publishing house and Lisa in the near future if they did not renounce their claim to my story and recall all unsold copies of the book. They must also release a statement admitting that Lisa was not the author and any proceeds must be signed over to me immediately. Unfortunately, some books have sold, but I wasn't worried as I would relaunch it and hopefully people would buy my version, which would also come with new material. In the end, Paxons folded like a house of cards and turned on Lisa like cowards and cheats that they were. They released a statement saying that they had no idea that the book was stolen. And now that they've been made aware, they were fully withdrawing the book from circulation, signing the rights over to the real author. I made a statement saying that I was grateful for all their support. And for anyone who would have already bought the book, I would gladly swap it for the real version once it's in print for free. Or you can even sell my copy to anyone with a fake copy for a reduced price if they wish to keep both. In the end, it did not matter as I'd written both of them anyways. Lisa, she's ruined. She literally lost all credibility and her career as a proofreader is over. No one will ever trust a proofreader who has stolen someone's manuscript. The publishing house dropped her and she could not get to work. Her friends started to ignore her phone calls and she was banned from the book group. We'll be reviewing the two versions of the book at some point in the group, which will be fun. The last I heard, Lisa had moved across the country to stay with her parents and she's unemployed. And I wish I could say I feel sorry for her, but honestly, I don't. Mr. Jacobs released my book and we added extras to it to make it special for anyone who was also fooled by Lisa. It had a character artwork, backstories, etc. It was fabulous and everything I dreamt of. I'm currently working away on book number two and doing interviews and attending conventions. Guys, I'm actually living the life. So that's it. That's the story about how a thief got her comeuppance. Paxons are still in business, but their reputation did take a hit, and it seems like only a matter of time until they're done, too, as people are looking very closely at their publishing record. All in all, I'm a happy girl. Well, this was a very bad situation for OP to be in, but I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know what her friend was thinking. There's basically no way to get away with this. She had to have known that OP was going to come at her with everything she has. Maybe she was hoping that she wouldn't go to this extent and just forget about it and say, you know what, you can have the story. But I do want to know what you guys thought about this. Drop your comments down below. Let me know your exact thoughts. Or maybe you've known another person that used to be your friend who backstabbed you the same way. Let me know your thoughts about this, guys. Drop it in the comment section. That's all the content for today. Thank you so much for joining in. If you want to, subscribe to the channel for more daily videos.